Uh, I don't feel it. Uh, don't feel it. Ball. The ball. Ben Fox. I mean, road for a second. Uh, I understand that we didn't get the Bean Road again this year, as far as upgrading it to Town Road. But um, I wanted to know from the select board that you were again going to plow down to the this year. That you can like ask. And it's as as he plows his hand, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to turn around and build. I'm going to do it. That's the plan. That's, what I'm, that's the reason I'm here. And the other reason I'm here is I do not understand why. When McFarland Road was graded last week, why Bean Road couldn't be graded at the same time since you had the machine over there? And it, they're the only two roads that are over there. They didn't have time. Okay. We resurfaced that road and another road, and that kind of where we ended up. Gotcha. I mean, you know, the time you the back, we're still putting it in we have an addition for a change order number one for Centerville culvert replacement. Okay, change order one, you said? Mm -hmm. Okay. What was the change? If we're adding that to the agenda. Uh, um, right. Wait, 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 Introduce yourself. Gary Smith. Right. Mark Road. What can so, we do for you? Got a couple of questions. One has to do with, um, I'm, I'm interested in adding on. I have solar now. Okay. And uh, I want to tear down a building I have. It's an old shed and build a new one with additional solar. But I've asked over the last month or so up in the upstairs, and they say that that's sort of on hold net metering. If it doesn't have, an, I would just add into it. So, do I have to talk to the village about it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I thought so, but yeah. I wasn't really yeah. sure yeah. how the town was connected with that. Nope, not, not at all. all. Okay. One problem. The, okay. <laughs> the, the other question I had was about I'd ask questions about if there's a road commissioner, and I see you have that on your um, number four item. Yeah. So, well, we talking about that. In reality, Mark is the road. Oh, okay. All right. So, I'm going to have issues or questions from this. You know, that's the man okay. who answers. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> People with Bean Road. <laughs> really? Yes, we keep plowing. Yes, we'll get it created. Okay. <laughs> Couple more. Battle Row. Uh, that was my other question about the speed on Battle Row. That's oh. recently got changed, but I see you're addressing that slide also. Yes, we are. <laughs> okay, so I'll say it's like that. <laughs> oh! <laughs> so, you know, it's um that came up at the at the last meeting, and uh, only who was here, and, and um, <laughs> And I said, I couldn't, because I suddenly started getting a lot of phone calls about this. I'm going, I can't, what is, what is going on? And I haven't seen that. And I thought, but, you know, you can drive someplace off. And then, you don't notice the you know, There was a one house there. You just never find me there. <laughs> well, two things from last meeting to add. Was, a, those signs have gone up about two and a half weeks before. <laughs> and it's one of those funny things. We've been trying to be cooperative with the village. And that's as people realize that's the village. All the way out to there is a village. I didn't realize it went that it's far. A, it's a strange. And if you go the other direction, if you go down, you know, towards Morristown, Katie's Falls, the village 
stops about where you get to the railroad was mm -hmm. and the rest yep. of it's the town, which doesn't make any sense either. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, we were, because it used to have 35 out for a while. It's like, and then they extended that up the hill. And yeah. one of the things that were, you know, came up in the conversation the last meeting, I'm going to talk about that, but does it make sense basically to have a policy with except for right in the building where 25 miles are going to make sense? But most of the rest of the once you get out of the heavy populated areas, I think they're looking at 45, right? Yeah, a lot of the outer roads are 45. Yeah, yeah, it would be 35. It's such a drastic jump. Now, it went down to 25 and 50. It's just like, boom, you know. And I think the 30, the 25 is ridiculous. This low that's a village thing, I guess. Well, and, and when you're right in the village, that yeah. does 25. Well, it comes out like over a half a mile. It goes the way up the top of the village, you know. When you're right in the center of the village. Yeah, right, right downtown, right, right, but not Battle Road. And then, and then my other thing was um, a few years ago, uh, I came to you and we filled out a form for fill, getting filled, you know, like when there's excess fill in, yep. in the town. And do I, is that like good forever? It's here, so I have to redo it. Okay. And now, how do I? I never got any bill at all in the whole time. I know they've done some projects out there, but maybe my name's off the list now. Is that maybe, what I want? Yeah, if it expires, then you have to renew it. If you don't renew it, they don't ask. Okay, I see. So, Steve is the new zoning administrator. You can, yeah, oh, okay. yeah, just give him a call and okay, get it filled out. And my last item has to do with our road, which has gotten to be a real problem. Our Marcuro, especially in front of my house, now behind the door is my barn. That it, it's always been, you know, a little rough. But, but last year, the very first snowfall we had it was a warm day, and you know, not much snow, and they plowed and took off a lot of gravel. So now, and, and then they graded it. So now I have banks that in places are 16 inches high on the side of the road, and it just funnels that, that water right down the you know, road, puts it all down the end, and, and takes a lot of dirt with it. And I think yeah. what's happening is it's like we're just sort of chasing a problem, you know, it's not going to. That dirt's not just going to show back up again. It just keeps going down, right. down, down. So, right. so and the answer, we get down through to get out of the hill. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be next year. Okay. I'm not sure. You, <laughs> I'm not sure that's the new plan. It's not going to solve the problem that we have. Well, we never have at all. <laughs> well, your field comes down to the road. Well, it doesn't. It goes in behind it. the road thing goes like this. I feel it all that way. So you know, the, 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 the ditch line, there actually is like a natural ditch in the field for all the water problems. And that's how it's always been. Oh, you don't have to look at it. Yeah, you have to look at it. That'll be a nightmare. <laughs> I mean, it's just funny that it never happened in all these years until they plowed it all. But anyway, that's my, that's all I want to bring up and I'll sit around waiting for some of the other discussions. Sure. If you want your, with the speed limit thing. Yeah, I think that was number six, right? right. I, yeah. Right. So, okay. Yeah. We'll get to where. Yeah. Sounds good. Right. When people come, we don't. Thank you. We try to take care of the every man's word. <laughs> These people wouldn't even have some candy. That's mm -hmm. All right. Um, oh, now how about if we do? Thank you. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> So it was a good audit. <laughs> it was a little bit late. I'm sorry. But I'm so delighted that, yes. And I think Jennifer learned a lot going through the process, too. And I'm available to her if she needs help with this audit, too. I told her that she could. And um, I've already forwarded all the requested items to the new auditors. So that's underway. And you probably noticed that there were only five auditor adjustments. I had many more adjustments, but Jennifer gave them to me, but only five out of, I think it was um, 10 before, or let's see, um, 15 in 2020. So yeah, so that's that's great. And she, yeah. like I told you before, she got a handle on the capital assets and I'm sure she's gonna do really well. Okay, yeah, that's great. She's 
She's trying to work with. She's yeah, she's she is. We have to win our money. Put on the account of serious face. That's right. <laughs> okay. Um is there anything in particular that we need to well, you had to have outstanding issue with the cemetery, and I saw oh, in the minutes that the cemetery um, board came and they said they'd work with Jennifer and turn over the book. So yeah. I yeah. think you're on, when I first started with the town, there were so many control issues, and, yeah. um, and it's great to see you in the place you are now. Oh, good. We're getting there so much. Well, and a lot of, you know, a lot of the smaller groups, I think they 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 fear if they if they don't do their own books somehow or other they're gonna lose control. Yeah. You know, and I think it just takes a while working with them and talking with them and with Jennifer and talking with Ron and talking with us. And it, you know, that is a well, you trust me, we have no desire to take over the centers. <laughs> <laughs> you've got a great grant manager <laughs> and you've got a great treasurer and you've got a really good team. So yeah, I hope yeah. you can retain, you know, um the talent. Yeah. Government accounting is hard it, to understand as well. It is not the it's, same. It's, it's not good. the same as a checking account. Yeah, you're <laughs> absolutely right. <wrong. laughs> <laughs> it's it's a whole understand different the budget is two totally different things. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, anybody have any questions for Glenn? No, I can't wait to look through it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do the only one. <laughs> yeah. And you visited the GFO website. I do. No, I probably went to and, and you become a member. <laughs> I'll take the spark ones from you. Guys. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's what we need to. That's right. That's okay. right. That's right. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank you. I enjoyed working for the town, and I appreciate it. How many towns do you do? You, does your farm do right now? I'm the sole proprietor, yeah. and I'm just one firm, and so I had three different towns. But and at one time, I had four. And, and what you saw in too much. our <laughs> audit was it was it comparable to other towns that you're working with? Um, it your software for the capital the fixed you. assets gosh, you. um is really good. That's much better than I see in a lot of towns. They put it on Excel, uh -huh. but then this is able to sort by function and type and and it's um superior to what I've seen out there. Oh. So I really like that. <laughs> that was great. Any other comments? Um are we lagging anywhere? Am I are we lagging anywhere? Um okay, anything's I I think um, Jennifer will need some additional training, and she's joined the Vermont League of Towns and Cities, and so she'll be able to do her own adjustments eventually. But right, but for pensions, um, that's quite complicated, and so um, I think as she gets more experience, I think you'll be just fine. And we have some control issues that she's talking about, like with checking accounts yeah. and stuff, but. We're now officially library is the last one, right? Well, um, there were some mispostings that happened during the, but that happens with everyone, right? If you're not exactly. doing it, yeah, you, you don't make mistakes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so yeah. and so, she took over and right, a lot of stuff exactly, too, so, yeah. right. And then there were some accounts that weren't classified properly, and so then they didn't close, oh, and so that was an issue. But um, I did a journal entry for it, and I let the auditors know about that with the journal on the tree that, oh, that has to it didn't correct itself once we changed the classification it didn't go back and so it has to be corrected again this year oh, but other okay. than that it should be oh good great mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you very much thank you. you're very welcome thank you thanks Bye. 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 Yeah. Okay. So
And we need to let's do uh, let's do the fire department side and use policy out there. Which I think we have pretty well under control, right? <laughs> well, the I, and I think the issue because you and I talked about it, and I, I know you and I talked, and it's just sort of part of realizing as many parts of government we, we don't we don't really have a policy, so you're in the process of developing a written policy so that that folks can you know it's easy to say this is what we've always done, and everybody just says this is what we've always done, but if you could go back and look, it might not be exactly what you've always done. You're going to have a policy that says this is what we do. You know, it just makes it easier for everybody long term to be following following the same policy. Now, isn't there laws for sirens? I mean, why would that be a policy where it's like the state law? Is that? No, you can. I don't know. I don't know. No, you have. The, you don't know what the issue is. Like we, I, I know what the issue was, and I, I and again, I, I'm not gonna hide behind anything. We might as well just throw it out on the table. We had a complaint. Look, what is the answer to fixing the complaint? Whether it's what was the complaint? The complaint is someone feels like they the sirens are being blared in front of their house at, because they've complained in the past. So the 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 there are two sirens. And they, the loud one is being used when it isn't necessary to use. Correct. Right. They they requested to tone it down, and I think Ryan's so addressed it. Yeah. Ryan's addressed his staff and trying to. They live about like three major intersections that you're going to go through. So it's yeah, you're to the there. So it's oh, that's an intersection. Okay. Well, we got three of them. You come out to the Yeah. Right. Oh, when you're leaving. Okay. Yeah. When you're leaving the arch. Yeah. yeah. Going right, you go up and you got another intersection. And then at the roundabout. Then you got the roundabout. Then you got Gulf Street Extension. I mean, you got the first intersection is really important. And that when when I talk with him, I feel that one you, that one you, you got it. You got to hit it. You, oh, no yeah. Doubt, no doubt. You're coming out onto the main route. That one's going to get hit. And, 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 I, I get the travel speed slow, so it probably is aggressive. But I think as a team, we can work on making, we can, we can address whatever needs to be addressed. And, Make it. Yeah. Well, yeah. They're not doing that. Two o'clock. They're not. Yes. They're not doing it at two o'clock in the morning. Right. They're doing it. You know, during the day, there's traffic. And there's right. not a lot of traffic. And they don't use them. Right. And I think it's easy for us to just ask them to be cognitive of it. Right. I mean, it, That's we all do our best. And this was this was my the complaint when we talked. You guys are volunteers. I appreciate the shit out of the volunteers. I don't think we need to hound the shit out of them. But do I excuse my language? Do I think that we can be a good community and do the right things? Yeah, because... I don't know. When it comes to sirens, I'm I don't know if I agree with this, but well, I want to blow a damn siren. I feel that nothing if changed it's in the last one year. Right. Well, it's, it's not the sirens, so the loud. There, there are two different there's, sirens. There's uh, the siren and something else. It's a the cube. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. he's asked to to not have the cube on. Um, oh, right. 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 So I don't know the difference. So and I don't, I'm, 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 that's what I said. I just always going to yeah, where I, I can tell the difference in my house. <laughs> and you go, the and, and I always when I do it, I go, the two classes, but back in the day when all you had that trunk one third, tires were 10 cases. Mm -hmm. Tires are almost soundproof now. You know what I mean? I mean, the insulation of the cars is a lot tighter. Well, so there's people have their radios are on. Lower the sound soldering. Yeah. In your car, you get the radio pink in your right. car soundproof. That's my yeah. Head. yeah. So I think I think we're uh, we're squared away. We will consider do, it be solved. Do, do you feel that way? Yeah. As a liaison, I'm just asking straight up. That's what for me. I'd rather here's the table. Throw it on the table. Yeah. Be open. Well, that's the way I am. The big thing is not here. It is on the table. It is to be I feel it's okay to the next one to provide. Exactly. Well, and and that's where I think then having the policy. Because here's here's when it's uh here's when it is the recommended use of the of, of the louder one. And the end here clearly times when you, you know, when as you say, when you don't use it. And I mean I know the Perhaps do the same thing, yeah. you know, when, I, when there's nobody out there. If I'm in the truck and somebody's in the center and there's no cars around, 
Right. And I, I get the, the pace at which it's going by that location. I right. get that it can be aggressive, but like you said, I also understand, and that's what I've said. I, I, being your liaison, I stand up here and stand up here. What is right? What is, what is not right? I do. Do I want? I've come out of that intersection and met you guys right there, and been like, oh, look, and had the camera over, right. like almost, you know, just. That intersection is tough. You the first one you're yeah. coming out, you got you got to nose out to see. You can't see very good. Yeah. That first one's real right. tough, you know. Yeah. And I think I think as long as everyone understands that there's a sensitive area there, and we just do our best, we do our best, and, and I, I feel you guys are doing a great job and continue to. Yeah. Mindful. Which that one? Yeah. As I say, but but it, you you keep working with Ron so that we do have a. Written policy. Kind of, well, yeah, I know you guys. I haven't really looked at it too right. much since then. Right. Uh, the other part that uh, when I was talking to Ryan was that there's a uh, call it graduation step where a firefighter uh, becomes deemed able, qualified to operate in the front cab. There's always two operators: the driver right. okay. yep. and the passenger, and they have to get to that approved qualified level and that's something the fire chief or the lieutenants will do at, you know at a, at a certain point but to document that that actually happened you know so that's in the record so that mm -hmm. that person knows yeah. not only where, did they get to that point where they have the privilege right responsibility but they it's also um concludes your process of yeah. well they're aware of the policy. training yeah, yeah. The, the policy what it to say Apparently, policy has been very, it could be very simple, but yeah. it's just something that closes that. So the drive the driver operators know. Yeah, we the policy. Yeah, it doesn't have to be very, you know, we're not looking at 18 pages. It's more like use common sense. You've been trained. We're going to watch it from time to time. You know, very, very simple. So that's all right. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Ryan? I'm we'll staying here and deal with roads. Are you going to tell me when the Senator Road is going to be open? <laughs> I would say Monday or Friday afternoon. Yeah. It's like, I hate coming to the village. I'm all tied up in that short. This is paying for the paving and part. We do have an inspection, inspection plan, which is the last step on Friday. Today. But it all goes well. That's you know everything's What's it now? weather's not a problem. So that's yeah, good. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we get the stretch of weather here and everybody's like fine. Yeah, okay. Um road commissioner job description of Mark French. So one of the other besides the okay, the 25 mile an hour signs had not been up forever, so I wasn't out of my mind when I was like, Are you kidding me? Where did they come from? The other thing in the conversation about about uh Road Commissioner Foreman is um, rolling is has uh, it, which is is not new is has a strong sentiment that um, about somebody else should be a road commissioner, and uh, he was very clear in his statements that when Ken Harvey was was on the select board and was chair that um, that uh, he was he was also the uh, road commissioner. And um, yeah, my mind just went blank and having one of those. And then I know yeah, yeah was, was the road format. And um, that was accurate up to the time when, in 2006, when Ken left the board because of health issues, when suddenly we had the road commissioner and the road foreman became the same person and was the same person for 10 years. So that's until, the question I asked. Until Mark took over. I asked that question. So, yes. Yeah, so okay. we, well, but and I thought that it was Ken Alexander. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But you look forward to Okay. Yeah. Right. But that that changed. So, okay. So, Rolly was right up to was when Ken Harvey was on the board. Gotcha. Of course, we are talking to Ken, so we could have been <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, That's right. So, so, there was a transition in 2006 uh -huh. until Penny Alexander retired and Mark was replaced. So, we have uh, 10 years of experience with the 
with the road commissioner and road foreman being the same person. Okay. We have, uh, and I'll let Mark you come up and speak for yourself here. Um, but but that um, Roly was also concerned that you know that the added responsibilities, and we were just kept asking, what added responsibilities are you are you talking about? Because in reality, Mark already does all these things. So um, and they're really there. There wasn't a significant answer. Um, I made it a point to talk to Mark. Um, about you know about the conversation and again yeah, I see in reality he already is a road commissioner um, and and was that was making him the official title road commissioner going to crush him and cause him to flee to Morrisville to go to work or something and uh, he's assured me that, that that won't be what does it. <laughs> it wasn't there a past conversation about how the commissioner doesn't has some type of more statue or something isn't that wasn't this something in the past that's been discussed yeah there there is a stat statute that says every town shall either elect or appoint at least one possibly two road commissioners it doesn't give you any guidelines on who that could be citizen highway department person select board member and that's been you right no, it's been, it's been the select board in general. Yeah. On, gotcha. On your annual yeah. well, point think... list. So, but that did, that never got to the point of what 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 job duties. We talked a little bit about the last meeting about what that right. entails, and it, it was on the statute statement. Commissioner, it's that. basically the select board remains the supervisor, and the select board delegates the jobs under. Under the other provisions of what the select board has to do for roads, for example, select board's responsible for ordering roads graded. Mm -hmm. That is a select board duty that could be assigned to the road commissioner, which Hyde Park is always assigned to the road foreman. So these they're, they're very you know they're very similar. At some point, the road commissioner becomes mm -hmm. the, the road foreman, and the vice versa. The only step that's different is when you get a little bit bigger and the road commissioner becomes like the public works superintendent. And you know, that, and that's, and that's where I think there's been a lot of conversation about. I've been, in my mind, what I've heard in the last meetings is that once there's a road commissioner, they no longer work for us. We just get the complaints. So that, like you said, if, okay. there, if there can be two parallel, then why not just say it? Road commissioner one, road commissioner two. Well, then it's still the same. But it gives him the yeah. make the decisions kind of thing. Yeah. So the select board would say through a job description, here's our road commissioner slash foreman job. Here's all the duties, mm -hmm. grading roads, et cetera, et cetera. And then you divvy up some of the other ones like grant applications, Correct. highway access permits, which the town administrator might do and has done. Correct. So, and those can be done by the road commissioner too. So I think in, in Hyde Park anyway, it's already been divided up a little bit. We just never really reflected or that. Formulated. And the select board held some road commissioner type things. For example, uh, uh, one of the select board members during the center road project decided to do an inspection of a culvert, called another select board member. All of a sudden you had two road commissioners challenging the contractor relatively out of bounds in the sense of what you normally would expect because Mark was in supervisory role for the project, but you had the select board sort of keeping that power of inspection, which creates a bunch of friction between the contractor, the road department, misinformation back to the select board because you have all these people watching work getting done with the select board members feeling they're empowered as the commissioners to worry about the quality of work when really there may be two or three other board members that think the road foreman should be worried about the quality of work. So in this change, what you really, what I see you really doing is saying, we are clearly moving any idea of what a road commissioner might do from the, whatever the select board thought it meant to one person that is in the field every day that can best deal with that. And we're taking a couple other things off to the town administrator. And that the road 
sort of supervision, if you want to call it that, or road quality crew or whatever, won't be the select board members. If they have an issue, they call the road commissioner, just like a resident would. Mm -hmm. The road commissioner slash foreman inspects or knows the answer because they just made that decision. Right. So there, there is a, there can be the two that kind of work together, but because we're sort of on the small side, a road commissioner that would have all the answers or know what's next or be able to respond to complaints is only going to have to go to the foreman, right? Unless they're in town every day kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that, you know, the, the clarity of order is one idea between this change. The select board would give up some um, sort of day-to-day -day feeling that they need to be more engaged with highway. That's sort of a change. That is a change from the past several and current select board members that feel like they want to be more engaged day to day with the highway department. Right? That would that is intended to end because the select board will no longer appoint themselves as commissioner. It will be put on something well, else. I I, whether whether it goes to the town administrator or foreman is what prior discussions had been yeah. since 2016. This change moves it to the foreman, keeps a few of the things with the town administrator. Okay. I, I'm just throwing it out there and be an open forum. That's why. Right. I just don't say, okay, give Mark all the power. And then, for example, somebody come in and says, well, my road got loud and the crap. And, and then now we. You do the appeal room. You, you're the appeal board. Yeah. So we get the pile of poop. We still, we always do anything. Exactly. We're the sounding board. But then what do we, so, so is, is he still working for the select board? Yeah. Oh, always. Yeah. Go ahead. It's still here. Yeah. But you're the, you're the directs. This is a right. statutory difference that you talked about earlier. Yeah is you don't slide a town administrator in between. Right. The road commissioner is statutorily responsible to report directly to the select board. Okay, that's the fortunate way to be. So if, if the road commissioner foreman has an issue with a road, can't fix the drainage, you, re, you know, I'm just trying to scenario, yeah. refuses to fix the situation, then you say, I'm done, I can't help you anymore. There's an appeal right, basically. Right. The select For the citizens of the select board. And about 99.5% of the time, you're not going to get that complaint, mm -hmm. would be my prediction. Yeah, right. But you have to have an avenue for the citizens to go one step more. It, it won't, it, it could be chasing the town administrator just for availability reasons. Right. But it should go to the full board right. on, a, on a real, you know, a real right. valid complaint that there's just a disagreement. Which that happens now anyway. A lot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean well, that, that's still hopefully happen. it won't happen. No, that, that, that's why. Yeah, I, yeah, well, that's why I'm just going to turn around and say that keep it open for them. It's much easier that way. But that I think yeah. that's happening because the select board retains some road commissioner status, so people feel like they can go here and skip yeah. the foreman. Right. right. So yeah, the should, it shouldn't happen as much here. Right. That's the plan. That's, yeah. where, that's, where, that's where we're alleviating. That's yeah, let's exactly. worry about long range planning, yeah. capital, capital costs, yes. all those bigger things. Let the foreman deal with ditching and drainage and take care of 99% of it. Yeah. And what are your thoughts on this? Well, I think with another with a road commissioner, in my opinion, would be a middleman. So, like I heard the complaints, whatever, it's too much on me. Well, whoever the road commissioner is going to come to me and ask me why I did what I did. Right. Talk to the taxpayer, come back to me again. Exactly. So it's going to be a lot more time invested for me. Yeah. And story. Like I said, just no that was me. I can explain. I don't need it back and forth. Yeah. I, I have it. Here you go. You know, this is <laughs> and you can nine out of ten. We made it, you know, we're yeah. coming out, everybody's yeah. happy in the end, whatever. But I do feel that it's going to be a lot more time invested of, hey, why did you do this? Yeah. Go this back to Rando, then come back. This is what we came up with. What are your thoughts? And that, like, it's going to be a constant back and forth. I can just deal with somebody and Immediately. meet in the middle, and we're both happy. Yeah. This might, I think, it'd be less stressful in some ways than having a middleman in between. I agree. Wasting your time on your end to explain things and then wasting time on the other end. And I've already been doing it. Like, between Vaughn and I, we've done it. Yeah, right. Because I think that again, even this, whoever you're, again, it's because we're a small town, your foreman road commissioner is always going to need to have a good relationship with your town administrator because a lot more of the of the grants and that sort of stuff is going to go through 
that's what you don't in a small town. That's what you don't put on your road commissioner. If you have, if you're the size of Morrisville, you're the size of Stowe, then you have someone that becomes public works, and they are they are on the road at all. You know, they're dealing with all that other stuff. So it's a it's a completely different kind of situation. Thanks. And I just mark while you're here again because because you and I have talked. I want to say so. How's the fifth man working out? Very good. Very good. We well, Ryan can tell us, but we can do two jobs, or there have been days we've done three jobs. Oh wow! Because I've got a guy in the excavator, a guy in the truck. Ryan and I are putting up signs that everybody's screaming about. Jason's great. Like it's so much better. Oh, great. So much more getting done. We've got a lot to do this year. We've got a lot But we can do. That was the first summer he was here. Not even the first summer. Yes. Well, you know, you have two guys on a crew, you have five guys on a crew. It's a huge difference. For us, it's been very good. Right. Everybody should hear that. And, and we love our excavator. Yep. He's running the excavator. The new gentleman's running the excavator. He's been running most right now. Jason and him are both oh, really good on it. Jason's really good on it. Yeah. But he's been. Jason's probably been spending a lot of time in the greater. Yeah. Especially. With all the rain. Yeah. <laughs> it's been the excavator, the greater, and the trucks have been very busy this time. Yeah. <laughs> but things are getting done. Things are getting done. And feet, we got we had a bunch of FEMA work and that's getting reimbursed. We have how's that coming with them? Do we know we have a, another meeting on Thursday? We're working like almost weekly with our PDNG, which is the program manager for FEMA funding. So they have a checklist of things that need to get done. Uh watershed consulting is helping us triage some sites because some of them may get spun off into bigger mitigation type projects, which take longer, like the Brook and Centerville one. Other ones can be closed because um, we size the culvert the right way and we don't need to go back there. And then in between you have uh, some options to do some upgrades. Like uh, there's two sites that might just get upgraded culverts by one size, which isn't called mitigation, it's just called an improvement that's allowed under the regular grant. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get through all those things. Anything that's been closed and done, yeah, that's the 75% eligibility. And eventually they'll start batching the damage sites, which is only eight, I think, this time around compared to 41 last time. So they'll batch those. And then if we can call that whole batch complete, then the money starts to come back. But we're, we don't want to call it complete because then you can't go to mitigation, right? Um, Once you call it complete, the mitigation window closes. The price tag is at one thirty. So, like, we're going to recover a lot of costs. Uh, yeah. So there's right. There's initial damage claims. The mitigation projects are unknown, but those, that could be another three or four hundred thousand, right? Easily, depending right. on Diggins Hill and the yeah. Collins Pond outlet on Garfield. Those two could be two hundred each or more, as we found from from Centerville was three something for one yeah so i was talking about more like the in-house work that recovers come around yearly budget area yeah the, any, the force account stuff will come yeah. back yeah eventually which is your sort of you're covering your operating expenses to a certain degree uh that may that won't happen uh, maybe that could happen this fiscal year since we're sort of early in june 30 world uh but some of those mitigation ones you won't see back oh. until the spring. 25 or 26 or something. I was going to say the Halloween one we just got. You, you always have a choice of not going down the long road. In right. other words, Mark is concerned about Collins Pond and sort of crossing your fingers on a patch to a sinkhole risk. Same things happening in, in Belvedere aren't helping them. It's the same thing. You close it up, you go down the mitigation route as long as you can, and you hope that that next storm doesn't just suck in a car, you know, right. but they don't let you go any faster than that. They, they won't let you call, they, right. yeah, they won't let you call it permanent and go in there and do a really nice patch because then they're going to say, well, it's good for another 20, we're out of here. And you don't get your $300,000 permanent 
politics. Right. It's sort of a yeah. sort of a little play on time. Yeah, you know, do you stay in long enough to be done with it for forty years? Probably should just try that for you know to use until they say no. Right. If exactly. they say no, it doesn't qualify. Then we'll do Mark will go in with the excavator and try to replace one or more sections of pipe or something. I don't know, but but it's still undersized, which is a problem. So it's our it is our undersized. If it doesn't come through a disaster, is still the town's cost. Yeah. That without FEMA funding, right. so if we do get damaged stuff as we go, it's better to pick them off and get them upsized and design right the right way for the long term. Sorry, got off. I we definitely got off track, but but I'll give you a, I'll give, no to answer your question better. Part of what we're doing on this weekly basis is coming to the actual cost and a, a new number for everything. So okay. eventually, you'll get a report of what's complete, what's sliding the mitigation. And Mark, have you had any conversations with the village? Oh, I yeah. have okay. okay. I will get to this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like it's going to take anything away from your duties you do now? What's that? Do you feel like moving into a, adding this position to you? Do you feel like it's going to take anything away from your position now? I feel like I'm going to do the same thing I'm doing right now. Um, I mean, yeah. I'm going to do that. We have some things in store for the commissioner, though. That you don't know about. <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> you have to accept the job first so you find out later. It's like every day. You're not a need, need, need to know. No, I, I did. I, I have told Mark, and I, and I think I put it in my cover memo that most towns have more uh, interaction, whether it's on the screen or in person with their right. road. Supervisor, foreman, commissioner. At select board meetings. And it's just, it's by chance that some stuff comes up that Mark could just answer in 30 seconds oh, exactly. and not give it life at a meeting. And then for two weeks, if he was at least, if he wasn't able to be here physically, just listening, you know, right. to the. So that's that's one of the only changes that I was thinking of would help the board and help the public is having access to that information at the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. And we can always do that at the beginning of the meeting so you don't have to. You're, people are always welcome to stay through the entire meeting if they choose to, <laughs> you know. But yeah, and, and it, well, just like this evening, it was great having you here with Pete Bro. There you go, Oof, okay, it's taken care of. And now, okay, you got to do, got to do Mark Good. Okay, we know that instead of leaving us with you know, all Mark in the morning. Yeah, we're, yeah, exactly. We'll be back in touch. Yeah, yeah, the person that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right, right. So it's just it, it, again, it's the sort of not putting somebody in the middle. But, yeah. We can get a big name for it. Because this, uh, this road commissioner job description, this is new. Yeah, right. Was, this is the new one. Yeah, that okay. was that was. I do have a strike version, but it was basically yeah. the road form in 2016. Yeah. Okay. With a couple of those things that we've been talking about that are okay. relatively that's what I, that's what minor, I thought, but relatively yeah. minor and some clarifications, things like that. Yeah. Um, okay. It, it would be used obviously if it if it gets adopted and put into play in that final version. I haven't had any edits to it yeah. since it was first done. Okay, so. Um, The other, the other final thing, if this goes forward, it is sort of a change in employment status that you probably want to talk about, Mark. Oh, it is. Well, because he has a letter of hire and a job description now that you'd have to. Uh, so if you wanted to adopt it and you don't have any changes to the job description, that gets you to the discussion of Mark. Exactly. Gotcha. This is just getting the job description finalized. And if you want to, it's not on as an action item. No, right. On this, but um, if you wanted so to, so let's just have it like from the next one. Bring final the comments. Yeah, bring final yeah. comments to next. Okay, and then we're going to talk with Mark and get the fancy name. Right. Maybe something like we're on the wrong side of his truck. Yeah, so. Yeah. Fire department puts the name on. Oh, that was the other. Yes. The lawyer told me to take that off. Yeah. It's bad. I've seen if you remember. <laughs> Let's see. So, anything else? Anything you need to know?
Mm -hmm. We got our brine machine. Well, a guy came last week and put that up. They made brine. That's a good thing. Remember that? That's a good thing we had to buy? Yeah. But way back. Yeah. Which I didn't want to do the air but the guy just flew in and. Oh, he flew, had to fly in from somewhere? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, they're, yeah, they fly in. Oh. They're from. We have here's and, and again, this is something that I had a question and, and Mark and I talked about. And um uh, <laughs> could you guys have seen here the other things we're doing with interlocal essential agreements. Um, that as other towns want to try it, that Mark, why don't you explain the deal we can do with the other towns for supplying brine? And how so, we, so, we supplied Johnson and Cambridge with some last year. Ryan, we got a flow meter, keeps track of how many gallons. Ryan's kept track of exactly what each town has taken. Then we swap it out. We, we've been swapping it out and trucking like Cambridge and Everett in our own thing. Oh. That's how. But we have a deal, a long standing deal with Town of Eden. Which yeah. Eden's been here all week. It's just the same, same oh. thing. Back when we used to help Roland when he was former, most still the mud season, they would come over and help us all. It's just swapping back and forth. And oh, the good thing, great. actually, the. It's still working. The neat thing with the new brine machine that I think Ryan and I can both up with, it tells you exactly how much salt okay. you're going uh, through. So you can really calculate exactly where we're at. Or just tell you how much you made, tell you how many gallons of water you use, and how much salt you use. Oh, cool. So the so the questions we had last year, you're going to really understand. Exactly. So yeah, you can really see. We're going to take two and a half pounds of salt to make a gallon of water. And when you're spread, you'll be able to know what your spread rate is, basically what you're yeah, kind of what you're off, putting yeah. out for pounds of salt versus what you're putting out for gallons of brown per mile, essentially. That'd be interesting to see. Yeah. So again, I think and and the the trading is again as we've done with Eden forever. And so you know exactly how monetarily how much it is. But my question was, should there be which that takes care of the salt and, and time and that sort of stuff. But in looking at needing to repair or replace equipment eventually, should pounds that we that they supply it to, <laughs> I have no idea what the number is. I'm just thinking, ship in a hundred bucks a year that goes towards, because eventually, again, like this guy coming in or need new equipment so that it doesn't, it doesn't all, how do you figure out, so with that, all that cost isn't falling on on par. Well, that comes in, yeah. and that's his, his agreement that they're making. Maybe it comes into saying, I want five more loads hauled, or I want another day of trucking. Exactly. You know, yeah. Make sure that we're getting it, understanding that our costs are more with this machine that our costs are more in trade. Well, right. And even with the other machine, right. just needing to think of capital investments right. in the future. And you're right. Because you're doing a lot of it. Right. You're not no, talking. Yes. Yeah. yeah you talk, talk, talk. Yeah. You said that. I mean, salt, you're not talking 30,000 gallons a year. Right. No, no. I right. think Johnson was 5,000 last year or something. Right. Cambridge, they went to like a thousand or two. They're new to it. They want to try it. Right. But um, those, you know, those aren't the sorts of questions right. that you get from people right. that they third hand heard that we are supplying right. rind to Johnson. And we, and we have, why, uh, why are, uh, right. Well, but then the question is why are high part taxpayers paying for that? Right. And what we need is to be able to say actually because that's what should be in that uh, right. per gallon price. Right. right. Exactly. 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 That that's how but we all agree it was how much per gallon. Right. right. So it's much for me to have you know that for us again, you can say they have all of us to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. So if you somebody says something, you can say, I have an answer for that. Yeah. And I, I know what's happening. I like passing the straight face test. I always say that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's right. No, that's just that's good to know. Okay. It works good because we I mean we put a lot in and I think it's different. 
Yeah, which is always nice when that five is over. Another, another truck or two tomorrow on Thursday, so we got that up. We didn't take very long. Um, okay, let's go to the speed limits on that road and class two paved highways, which I don't know that you need to be here, you guys, except to chip in what's a realistic speed. So, so apparently I'm missing something <laughs> because I'm confused. It's now about about a month ago. Okay, suddenly I started getting all these phone calls from folks who live out on Battle Road, okay. just just yeah. crazed at the 25 mile an hour speed limit. So it got changed to 25 from 50. No, 35. Well, no, 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 part of it was 35. Okay, right. okay, and then. And then trying to be in compliance and nice with the village, which is 25. Gotcha. Okay. Ron had them put up the 25 limits, and that's where people went, you know, crazy. God, I, oh, yeah, I don't blame them. And I sat here at the last meeting and said, What are you talking about? 25 okay. miles an hour. Okay. So it's very not, hard to drive the 25. Is, <laughs> I, did, I did it the other day. I went to sit. All right. It's like, Oh my God. <laughs> and the, the real danger is the people coming up behind you who have every intention of driving over you when you go. But if that's a village, you. there's nothing that we're usually doing. It's a town yeah. ordinance. Well, so the town yeah. ordinance was put in place in 2018 okay. with the 25 in there. The signs were never changed. Right. So there was no ordinance change. So it would it seems we have we have a qualm of people not happy about it. Is there anything for us to do? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then if you look at the state change, yeah. I see that. <laughs> you see that. It's different. But I, I, I change the word. That's what. That's the, that, yeah. I see that. Oh, are we rolling into that conversation? Yeah. Are we just rolling into that conversation? Yes, we are rolling yes. into that conversation. Probably faster than twenty five. Let's, <laughs> let's hit it. <laughs> so. Ron, what do we have to do? So to the, in the staff report, there's a list yeah. of roads that have come up over probably the last five years, maybe, that residents have come asking for right. help. <laughs> we have, yeah, so I tried to remember them all. I think I got them all. But if you're going to do an ordinance amendment, which is next, you would look at the list and come up with new limits. You also have to pick segments. So beginning here and in there. In this case, you could ignore the village limits and come up with your own definition of where from Route 100 to Mike Doobie's house, if anybody knows where that is, yes. it's 35. From 30 from that end point to Grimes Road, it's 45. You know something simple like that. So that yeah. that gets put into the ordinance. You wait your sixty days, no petition for a vote. You change the signs. That's relatively a normal process. The other process is to not wait for the ordinance, not do a recommended speed study, and just change the signs and wait five years for enforcement. Those are the only two paths you can, you can go on. So if you change the ordinance, you don't have to have a speed study. No, no, the ordinance and the speed study go together. So you have to do a speed study yeah. in order to change the ordinance. Yeah, that, that's required. And then, then you can enforce that the 60 day mark. When was the last speed study done? Uh, uh, yeah, it was done. There's one in 2018. There might have been one in 21 or 22, but it's the average speed or the 85th percentile, which is what is recommended that you gauge your right. spot, right. yes, signs to is supposedly the magic number where 85% of the traveling public feels comfortable. Oh, okay. So if you never posted the road and you took that speed study with the hoses across the road and they calculate the speed, 85% of the cars would drive at level of comfort. And you're supposed to make the reg oh, you're supposed to regulatorily make the change in the ordinance within 10 miles of that. Sure. Okay. Because if you if you do it what happened, you got average speed on Battle Row at 50 plus. Right. And then you have a 25 sign, you, you get hard, you don't get any compliance. It's hard to get compliance. Yeah, for sure. So you want to post it within something reasonable and people decide. And Jericho wrote, not Jericho, Brown's Trace wrote yep. Jericho. Yeah. They had 45, they went to 35, 
And it's still hard to do 35, but people do the 40 to 45 and everybody's kind of cool with that. You get people that try to do 35 and you get backed up traffic because people are, and it's just a natural wide open, mostly wide open road. Yeah, so that yeah. same thing happens on Battle Road. It doesn't happen so much on Centerville or Central Road. Those, I think people go 100 miles an hour people. Okay, Center Road, they go 100 miles an hour. <laughs> so you, you only have an option up to 50, but. Um, you can hear them. <laughs> so. Uh, Trombley Hill, Garfield Road, those are paved, sure. paved roads that have no speed limit. Yeah. So what do you what do you want to do with your agenda item? You could agree to do just battle road. You could agree to catch up with some of these bold requests. You say, let's get a draft uh, ordinance presented at October. So you see what the ordinance will look like. And what's the average cost of, of drive study ordinance? Speed study. Yeah. The speeds, if we, we've been pretty good about requesting traffic data from regional planning office, which is part of the speed study. So if we have relatively current uh, speed study, traffic volume study data, you can use that and pretty easily convert it into administrative study, like oh. in, in office. The cost is really the engineering stuff to get the actual test, which regional planning lets you do two or three a year. So as long as those are relatively current on the shelf right now, which I, we have a bunch of them, you can pull from that. VLCT and the Vermont Local Roads has a little checklist of things you're supposed to consider. Oh. One of the things you consider before you all set a speed limit is to drive the road yourself and try to do a Gary did. Which right, is, try to do the speed which limit. Is, which is one of two things. You either try to drive the speed limit there now. That's one test you can do. The other test you can do is forget about speed limits. Mm -hmm. And drive comfortable. And just drive. That, 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 yeah. And then you just have and I I did this um sort of passively as a passenger once when I was not really telling the person that I want I was trying to see what they would drive oh. because it wasn't posted. You can kind of glance over and see what they're doing. Yeah. You know, and then you can kind of feel like, oh Jesus, this is 40. That's and that felt good to me as a passenger or a, a driver. Yeah. And the speed study comes out at average speed of 46 miles per hour at that 85th percentile. You can do 40, you can do 45. You go below 35, you know you're gonna have a problem because people are comfortable at the 40 right. plus. That's it's somewhat scientific, but a lot of it just make it enforceable that people respect the sign. Right. That, that's really what it's about. But you have to put that in writing. So the speed study that Matt mentioned is a document that gets attached to the ordinance. Gotcha. And then the select board still has to vote the ordinance with their final decision. That speed study will have a recommendation, sort of like I put my, mm -hmm. my, you know, a range. Well, you know, within 40, 45 works for this row, 30, 35 works for that row, so on. It's not very exact. So can can we go ahead and do the study, but can we go ahead and take down the 25s? Well, well the problem, we'll no, 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 no. The problem with messing with signs is all liability. So if somebody goes out there and gets killed, the first thing they look at is what the ordinance say, what the post limit was. Mm -hmm. So if you intentionally do anything that messes with the traffic control, then the town increases its liability. So my recommendation is don't touch it. It's in compliance with the sign. Oh, but if somebody gets killed because they're driving one <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> But you, you're you're taking an action that is sort of reversing what you had approved. Yeah, and you, and you don't have to a straight speed limit sign because somebody got pulled over. The only thing that you could do is leaning over and you got off the ticket. Yeah, it's a speed limit. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, I remember this little story about some kids taking a stop sign and somebody got killed and they got arrested. You know, joking yeah. around stealing a speed and stop sign. But what you could do is just is raise more awareness to the change in the intro if you want to do that. Okay. You have a speed slowdown sign, Ed? Yeah. yeah. So some people will put those signs up and then they put the little orange flags above. Oh, yeah. So we they got a, they sort of need to happen and we got a 25 with an arrow ahead, then a 25. Just yeah, the big time. Yeah. 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 So we were going to 50 to 25, so we have to give them some more. We couldn't. Right. Right. Well, that's about right. the only thing you do in the interim to help okay. people realize is make okay. those so more I, evident. You know. But whether you want to do that or not, the time the time frame is really on what you're talking about too. Yeah. How quickly can we get there? Yeah. So and let's take care of all these requests. I was going to do it. Let's just I think we should take care of them all. Yeah. Time. So we right. So the next meeting we'll have like action items for the changes in the ordinance, which should invite Stephen for that one.
Shouldn't fight who? Steve Morse. Right. He's, he's oh right. right. Yeah, he won he's waiting for the gravel road to change. Yeah. Right. And well, yeah, he's battled. He, he went to the whole town and oh, there's a sign here. <laughs> if he wants to come be part of some type of study. Right. 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 We'll have Mark talk with me. I'll talk. Yeah. 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 He's in with thirty five. Oh, thirty five in the gravel section, but I. Don't, I think I got lost with taking notes on what other roads he was concerned. Yeah, yeah. He was interesting. He, he was. I don't yeah. remember capturing him. Yeah. 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 It's very, yeah. Right. But he, right, he maybe. He like, drove the town and bet he knows, he knew where more speed limits are during the South. Uh, yeah. yeah. He might have info for us. So, the funny thing about Battle Road, in particular, since I drive every day, of course, is that the road, the speed limit in the beginning part is the slowest part, which is lower now, 25. The road actually gets more dangerous the further out you go because you have the big ups and downs. And the the yeah. And actually, that's where it should be slower. And for my two cents, I thought when it was 35 up to where it was, that was fine. Yeah. And I think after that, I think you probably could bring it down a little bit. Is it so a little like you said? Well, that, you know, I mean, some people like drive fast, but, um, you know, but I think 40 is. Fine. I, I drive along there 40 feels comfortable. Yeah. yeah. I'm doing 50. It's like, okay, I hope uh, Jared doesn't run in front of me right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and thank you on that. Yeah. 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 That's why I think I'm. Uh, that's what feels comfortable to me. I think that's probably fine. that's what we're going to find out that 40 or 45 yeah. is, is going to be. It's 45 is what it is on Sun Road, right? Is that what it is on our road? Yes. Yeah. Center, Center Road, 40. 35 in Garfield. Called the gravel, not the paved. So the paved on Grav uh, Garfield and the paved on Trombley are unposted now. So they and unposted is considered forty five. Right? Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's that's a state ordinance. It's a it's the default speed or the default right? default speed. under state law. Yeah, it's like my dirt road is fifty. Yeah, yeah. 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 Once in a while, I drive it up. Yeah. 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 That's why they try to. Okay, so well, you still got to drive the condition for real. I mean, you got to work some right up. And like we said, speed limit signs are only enforceable with their force, but yeah, not everybody wants to sign, but right. still. So, what, what do we, we need, need to, to do? To, you know, we're, got, we're moving, we're chugging. He put an agenda just okay. to put an agenda item for the 10th of October. Okay, so, so we will. See a draft. You'll have a draft or an exchange or whatever. Yeah. Okay. And whatever the back of study okay. stuff I have. Yeah, yeah, have yeah right. Oh, great. So, okay. Okay. Perfect. Right. Wonderful. See how much room we have You can be the goal of that. Oh, okay. All right, we've got this all the way. We want to We're supposed to stay longer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. If anyone needs to get his uh, kennel yeah. services. Yeah, yeah I was right. Kennel services. Yeah. Uh, I, am, I am hopeful that there's a good story in the Thanks Thank you. Ryan, you appreciate it. Thanks for coming yeah. out. Yeah. Bye, guys. Um, Fine, but I gotta take my hope, friend, right? again. Hopefully, there was a good story in this citizen this week. Um, on what I was the kettle, yeah, excuse me, yeah. Um, Johnson's still looking. I talked to Dean Locke, who was at our ACO. Yeah, meeting. we're still looking, you're still knocking on doors a little bit, not right. too aggressively. Looking okay. for what, like somebody that'll. A new kennel, right? So, so what we have is loyal kennels who's been sold, right? and the and of course where everybody has forever taken their you know the strays and everything, yeah. And uh, these folks don't want anything to do with it. So it's like suddenly there is no place to take them. the strays that are picked up. Mm -hmm. Um, and and about fifty percent of the dogs that get picked up. Within a day or two, we're reunited, reunited with their, you know, with their owners. Mm -hmm. You know, Fluffy went out for a walk and couldn't remember how the heck he get home. So, and uh, on the radio, you hear it too. Say, hey, I got it, you know. But the but these other dogs, hey, you know, it, it takes a while, and they all they work with a lot of organizations to, uh, you know, to rehouse them and, do, and all that sort of stuff. 
but we suddenly are confronted with there literally was no place for them to take these dogs. Uh, still has its own little place that it's always used, but everybody else looks never isn't exactly the same, the same spot. Um, we we looked at uh, all of that of the of the animal control officers got together and talked about it. They're going, yeah. Um, with, and they came and talked to us at, at our uh, at our last meeting. And there are a um, there's actually a, a pretty good system. I probably still have it, and um, that that uh, Allie shared with us that it's it's like everything is prefab these days. There are these prefab kennels for about that kind of you you plug in to take care of the electricity so they come all wired for that because you've got to have water you've got to have electricity you know you've got to have a wastewater treatment system I mean it's not you know you think about it you have you, you got to have a kennel mm -hmm. so um and one of those those things is about fifty thousand dollars um but what would probably handle most of take care of most of the demand in the county. It's not just, again, it's not just Hyde Park. So, um, and we were, um, we met with Johnson earlier in the week about the interlocal assessor agreement. <laughs> and so we were talking about the kennels as well. And, um, and you know, if we could, if we could get on, on my list to do that I haven't gotten to, and I thought, well, let's wait and see if the, Let's see if we do get this good story in the in the local paper that it's and they've reached out to all the people that have kennels and this sort of stuff and mostly people that have that kind of an enterprise now which is is no longer a low cost sort of thing don't want stray dogs any place near mixing with it they they just they aren't interested in it which if I'm charging somebody fifty bucks a night to take care of their dog or fifty bucks a day to take care of their dog, I you know and and they they all understand it as well. But we're thinking with with one of these facilities so that you that it could be a uh, somebody that already has animals, whether you're a dairy farmer, sheep, goats, what it you know somebody that already has animals and has everything that you need, it could be a reasonable add on to them do it and, and particularly if the towns are saying we'll chip in and do the here's your here's your infrastructure building um if you'll take on the the job and of course it's not it's not going to cost 10 bucks a night to keep a dog anyway anymore either which of course we've been everybody has been being charged by jeff forever you know a more realistic cost is you know 25 30 bucks a night anyway and and what happens with those costs is then when when somebody claims their dog, they're responsible for the for the cost. So uh, we're hoping that that with uh, you know with the story coming out because they've checked with all the people they know, but there are lots of people out there that have no idea this is going on, and letting people know that there will be somebody who will say, "I'm willing to talk to you about it to yeah. see if we can to see if we can get to a resolution for this." Fair enough. So. We'll see what happens. Um, okay. Termination account. We're working our way through this slowly. Now, the do, okay. Yeah. Hopefully, you will be happy tonight, Matt. Community Development Special and County Administrator Job Description. The last time I gave it to people and saying, so we're ready. I'm, I'm ready to. I've said for anybody to for rewriting the ad to come up with. Okay, we're done. Okay, we re rewrite the ad. It's time to put the ad in. Yep. I, I, for the record, it's not that it makes me happy. I, I one of the things I'm going to bring up tonight is ask Ron how his how his so called retirement's going. Yeah, and and, and I'm going to ask him if I'm getting a two year revision provisional <laughs> retirement move to Florida. <laughs> how many more how many more years do we have exactly uh, uh, the great thing with, with the new position that, uh, that's, right. <laughs> that's right see well the great thing is is it sort of see as we ease in and and again this other the again coming up with the uh with the great the um I can't, I never remember what we keep calling it right the community development specialist mm -hmm. let's say a grant person 
he can do that anywhere in the country. <laughs> That's what's great about that. <clears throat> we'll, um, Let's see. And Steve keeps coming in every time he's supposed to be here, and that's good. And he seems to be happy. Yeah. I've talked to him. He yeah. seems to be he's he's into it. He's, he's, he's in yeah. Low, yeah. No, that, no. I've actually walked a lot recently. We've worked on a couple of different phone zoning cases. He just he beelines through the process, even though there's like people coming at him from the sides or just not working with him. And right. Eventually, he just he keeps trucking, and people come along. <laughs> yeah. You know? Sometimes you can get confrontational. He just slow. He, I, I, I'm telling I, you, I know you have your experience. Here's your options. We gotta go. You know, and he just keeps going. And I don't think I've heard him raise his voice. No, or, no kidding. Or stop out of the office. No. And, and people have said thanks for your help a couple times. I will get you know, over here yeah. a little bit. Um, but I'm not engaged. I'm not holding his hand. I'm just kind of like you know. Yeah, yeah. When he's every, so no right. questions. Every, Every week, there's a couple of suffers sure. that I can help him through, or give him a template of some decision that he was, you know, didn't want to draft himself or whatever. Right. Because he didn't know where to find it. Right. He has access to all the old zoning files and the server, so he can go and get it. But going to find that one thing is not easy when you look at somebody else's system. Yeah. So that helps. Just being available for that helps because mm -hmm. it speeds up the applicant's time to sure. get a response. So, but no concerns with that. Mm -hmm. They. Um, like Glenn has said, the, the finance is going well, pretty well. Uh, Krista's back on, you know, basically full time the way she was with Kim gone. So that's working. She's still happy and yeah. jumping right in. And yeah, so back to the steam ahead there. Yeah. Today. So these two new positions would be uh, in, are intended to be complementary, so they work together. Uh, Johnson just hired a similar position at 16 or 20 hours a week. They call it SEDS, which is Community Economic Development Specialist, oh. because they're looking for economic development focus. Whereas this the high part one is more yeah. about everything community, yeah. Whether it's the art project or it's highway project or whether it's uh, sidewalk planning or the new type of those kind of bigger things that kind of operate on them. But they're meant to work together. You have the town administrator and this position. And and so, to somewhat the other two. I was like, gonna say I too. So yeah. They, they they would be the kind of your team. Yeah. You know, of those four people to get things done. So right. And I, I don't see the town administrator or this uh, community development person of being um, separate at all. Yeah. Right. You know, right. somebody's gonna be here day to day figuring out what the issues are. Somebody's gonna be over here trying to get your long range objectives that have to mesh with the day-to-day. -day. Right. So and, and I, I think it'll I think it's gonna work. I mean, yeah. It's true. it's it would be I know it would be beneficial to have them separate, just my own experience. Yeah. Having them combined you end up diluting both to a certain degree, which is a doesn't help. Then if the board if the board says at your March organizational meeting, our goals for this year You'll have a good team to give you the finance reports that you want, have the public relatively satisfied with the planning and zoning permitting world, because that can get very distracting. Yeah. And 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 somebody that can implement them through the either grant programs or working with committees and all those kind of things that help you know the citizens participate as well. So it's it's really meant to be all these changes meant to be like a five year plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just, just to react to something right. now. That's why yeah, it's taken right. months. Right. Well, and it's gone well so far. Yeah. I, mean, I think the pace has been right. Yeah. I mean, okay. We've gone through a couple of funny. Yeah, yeah, the funny thing was okay. was tough, okay. but then, then now okay. he found Steve. Yeah. For this yeah. yeah. No, and and for the city. And now he, he is mellow. He is definitely mellow. Mm. Um so so we didn't see anybody want to change the end or no. well that's I, I again it was last you said here it is it's you know it's mostly i want here was our draft of the ad if people have suggestions they want to change it terrific or it's time to post it yeah no i like that you do both the job description right. should be voted uh and then the ad saying you know publish Whatever time frame you want to give, you can give a deadline or you can give uh, a uh, open to build. We also have to touch on the budget stuff, which is also an issue in the 
job description or a cover uh, we talked about a range in yeah. hours. Yeah. Uh, 32 for the town administrator yeah. and DDS 24, right? Um Anyway, whatever those hours are, we'll need to help. We talked about a 3224, if I remember right. Yeah. 10 to 15. Yeah, town administrator 32. Yeah, 10 to 15 was CBS. 32 is the child. Let's see what happens. Yeah. It's just standing up and I pull the hamstring. Um, and sitting like by the end of the day, sitting a long time, the transition from sitting to standing. Well, let's get into these last few things. Okay. So let's see. So, so, that's right. Oh, no one wants to stand up. I go, oh, okay, that's good. So then I should make a motion. Yeah, let's see. Let's do the job description. Oh, sorry. Part. Okay, so we'll approve. I'll make a motion to approve the town administrator and CBS job descriptions. Yep. Yeah. Uh second. <laughs> okay. okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. And now we'll move to run the ad. Okay, so I will make a motion to um, run the ad for the town administrator and CDS, right? That, that was discussion, yeah. So you, you, can, you can, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Okay. So you can do both same time, send it all out, and try to draw two people. Oh no, we should have the town administrator help hire the CDS. Yeah, you can do the town administrator first. Sorry, I mean, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> you can do the town administrator first, knowing that that person needs to find a good match. Right. For whatever right. skills they bring. Right. So you're not double True. Up. You almost want to fill a void. Yeah. With the CDS, if the town administrator right. doesn't have it. Yeah, no, I agree right. with that. Do you, but you don't need to look at that. Right. I think I'm following everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it doesn't limit you in the sense that it just gives a misperception to a CDF applicant. I agree that you're trying to hire them by advertising. Yeah, uh, when you're when you're trying to do the same thing with the town administrators. So yeah, it's not good. And it just it creates a little bit of a, yeah. No, you I don't know what you have. Do you have the town there? Right. 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 That's the problem. We have one. <laughs> Yeah, so just what Justin did, just to give you a, a sort of an analogy a little bit, Justin was hired as an assessor, right. uh, uncertified, and Hyde Park and Johnson hired a senior assessor to shepherd, mentor for six, six months to get that person certified, but also used to just all the different things that have to be done. So, and so there's, there is a handbook, there is a, you know, lister slash assessor handbook, way different than having somebody Teaching. sitting by you and, and helping you through the handbook, so to speak. Yeah. So I think that, I think that worked out okay with Terry mm -hmm. for you versus you going cold with, definitely. with just PBR. Yeah. And you sure you learned it a lot quicker than you yeah. would have. Had to as March. Yeah. Ten days. Here you go. <laughs> so, and PBR does offer a uh, district advisor, but more like I got a question. Right. Yeah. You know, not that's a, not right. In, 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 this is an advisor did come up, but it was scheduled for. A couple hours, or whatever, wasn't what Terry's able to do exactly. on a regular basis. Get so anyway, that that's sort of the idea with the town administrator. Yeah, the interim town administrator either leaves totally and hands over the computer, and hopefully the computer's in some sort of order so they can get to your topics. Uh, so they have some base ground information. There, there are no paper files per se. Right. A lot of it's computer driven websites 
portals, all these things that we have now. There's no files to turn over anyone. Right. It's all made. Yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> there, you know, there's computer. 15 websites with passwords and, you know, yeah. uh, double authentication and yeah. fingerprints. Oh, yeah. That all have, that's the longest uploading that we even found with Justin. It's just like there's so many things that are just that much different to log in. They, it takes time to get help with a bug, but once you're set up, it's good. So if you do find somebody that has the skills to come in, there should be some kind of portal app or training, sure. which we always talked about anyway. Yeah. And then eventually the person will be on their own. At some point during that transition, you do the CPS. Yeah. Yeah, like that's a good plan. It's softer on the budget. True. As well. Yeah, right. Okay, well then I'm going to make a motion to advertise for our the town administrator position, and I think we should run till filled. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think probably some of the best places to run it, you know, is is the service that the state has. That's how we picked up Steve. Right. I guess advertising yeah, the other places as well but that right. you right. Right. you do. Yeah, your front front porch forum, your all that. Yeah, local. It's a local yeah. stuff and. Yeah. Then yeah. statewide. Or? Yeah, the, well, there's list serves. There's, Let's, yeah, there's yeah, the yeah. Manager administrative list serve that goes to every current person that may be wanting to move. Yeah. And, and and in this transition, you stick around always. We work. Yeah. So uh, right, uh, Foster. Yeah, to answer to answer your question, so Stone Shore Consulting mm -hmm. is able to stay on in any capacity we come to an agreement on. Right now, the current agreement ends in January, and the end of January with the anticipation that match the budget. On the community development piece, which is also potentially the transition piece, um, you need to talk about that or okay. advertising for that. That's just a decision you have to make with any new job description. Yeah. We can do that job as well for continuity more than anything because there's a lot of projects that are half done mm -hmm. or just starting that's really hard for something new to come in and just right. be able to call the right person even. Right. So there could be a secondary transition there. To answer. And, and, and keeping that on would automatically include me as a resource to the new town administrator. So that's a sort of a benefit, I guess, Yeah. to, to deal with um, just onboarding. Training. Yeah, question. So, you know, with, with Steve, it was very quick. The yeah. new town administrator may be just as quick. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, but it's good to have that sort of backup plan that um, I'll be around to help them. So, yeah. All right. So you made the motion. Well, I so moved. Yeah. Okay. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstain? Okay. 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 Return check in. So this is the policy right here. Yep, it's in front of me that yep. we need to sign. I read it. I don't know. Did you read? No, because this wasn't in the email. I read it tonight. So that's in your packet, though. The return yeah. policy. Oh, right. The draft yeah. is in our policy, yeah. right? It's the ACH and return check policy that yeah. Kim needs. Did, didn't Kim send? Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. We have to sign it and approve it. Yeah. There weren't any from the drive. This was what you sent in the email saying that it wasn't going to be uh, where you were. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so watch for it. Yeah, right. It's a yeah. Draft. yeah. So I'll make a motion to approve Kim's return check and ACH policy. So moved. Um, okay. All in favor of approving the return check. We all sign, or yes, is this yes. just. Um, never heard there. Have everybody signed? Yes, We're all in it together. Me. She put a note on there and have us all signed. So. All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. There's the questionnaire. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. So we have that. Oh, she doesn't have to year. Year. Yeah, she does that last year. year. She doesn't have to file that to yes. the towns and cities every year. Yeah. Yeah. Every year. Yeah. yeah. That goes. And it looks like you just signed that later. All right. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 Financial management oh. quick screen for Kim, so I guess we just need to okay. make a moment yeah. to approve it. Yeah. Okay. I'll make a moment to approve Kim Moulton's financial management questionnaire. You'll make a motion to approve Kim's Moulton's 
This. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Approved. Wanted to make sure I was approving the right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm blaming you. Oh, in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? What is I know what tonight's meeting minutes are going to look like. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm just talking to him. You know? <laughs> well, okay. Here we go. Just a And this email from this president on that row, that's what we discussed, right? We right. Mm -hmm. um, was this something different? Sorry, I just okay. that was the speed, that was the speed limit. Mm -hmm. email. email, email, yeah. Yes. Okay. They contacted me regarding the fact that they just yeah. wanted to know in the phone port so oh, okay. If, if you folks wanted to look at it too, when you make your your decisions. So are you is someone responding to that? Mm -hmm. Is that you? Where go. Yeah, but yeah, out of copy. So they just want to know what was going on and for that they don't think any changes are needed and the previous changes were needed as well. Okay, so, so they so no action item needed or anything like that on there. No, it's just, it's just the fact. That's so we don't comment type of thing. Right. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Well, and I think they will now. They can they can check in with this and right know that, know that we're discussing that. Yeah. Exactly. I know four of them the meeting minutes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um. An update on the interlocal assessor agreement. had a request. I an email from Justin saying that he had confirmed that Berkshire is interested in being the fourth town. St. George was just added back in uh, earlier September. Okay. Thing. So there's three towns in which will go for sure be the fourth for a total of 24 hours, which kicks in retirement. Nice. Uh, we had a, a sort of a discussion with Johnson about as as towns are added, the benefit level goes up because a lot of it's prorated based on 40 hours that adjust, that adjust down to the rates that mm -hmm. towns have to pay uh, because they have added benefit cost. And it's better to have, you know, like 32 hours, you know, get in 24 where you trigger the cost, but you're not sharing <laughs> on the hours, you end up with a, you know, more of an increased cost, but not enough people to share it. Yeah. So better to go to 32 or 40 or something than everybody's you know to share it. that was once you add the benefit, every hour that you add just gets split, you know, differently. So it's kind of a transition question that we we always wanted because in the beginning we were looking for five pounds. Right. You know, we wanted to be a full-time position, we wanted to have benefits. Right. Uh now that we're there, we actually started out at like a deficiency with the pounds. Right. But no benefit right. cost. So as you ramp up, you end up with a not a not a huge an unanticipated change, but something that the two towns being Hyde Park with 16 hours wanted to talk about. So sure. Yeah. So St. George um at being a third party would be also the one that needs to consent to Berkshire, which I think they have it there. There's no objection from St. George being the board clerk for St. George. Yeah, right. Hold on now. <laughs> <laughs> There's no objection to adding more hours. Um and I think we're expecting that Justin would continue to maybe try to get to the 32 by yeah. like running into people or the two towns, all three towns, all four towns would advertise again. We did that at the beginning when we sent a letter out to all the municipalities saying, hey, we're trying something new. And yes. was, you know, you have that split opinion of new. Uh, you guys figure it out. Exactly. Uh, then we'll, so then we'll join. So yeah. We can actually write that same letter with a Hey, we're doing it. We're doing here's, it. here's some history. We we're six months into it. We have yeah. a certified person. Exactly. What do you what do you what do you think now? And maybe accelerate back up to that 32 plus or minus. I don't know. So we could edit, but. almost take two more towns, Justin. Like it's a, I think mean, so Justin can explain it better, but you know, jumping to 18 towns at 32 hours. Yeah. Um, wouldn't it be worth his time and effort to get to all those towns? But yeah. I don't know what he's what, what you're thinking. It'd be better than find one more big town. Yeah, exactly. Is that what it would be? Yeah. Well, eight hour town would be nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, not for this grand list. I want to wait until the 2025 grand list. Gotcha. So, right. Yeah. 
Right now I'm working Tuesdays in Johnson, eight hours, Thursdays in Hyde Park, eight hours, and then St. George, kind of a new schedule. Sure. But figure that out, it's going to be every other week I'll be in St. George on Wednesday, then every other week I'll be in <clears throat> Berkshire on Wednesdays. Oh, yeah. And the, day, the week that I'm not in St. George on Wednesday, I'll be in St. George on Friday. So St. George will alternate Wednesday, Friday. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it down. yeah. I'm telling people, they're like, well, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you got it. But, yeah. but I like, I mean, I'm sure the town's like that because you're designated a specific day right. so that every right. town knows yeah. when you're going to be in the office. So exactly. that's important. Yeah. That was part of the agreement. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. So if you yeah. pick up like a yeah. hard work or someone, somebody yeah. like that, or someone close up, right up, up your up way. Your way. Would be nice. Yeah. But yeah. we do have a contract on the property in Hyde Park now. Oh, so oh congratulations. Yes. Yes. Down here. Oh, right. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah. yeah. Congrats. We, 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 we're friendly neighbors. Yeah. I've noticed for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you on our road? No, um, oh, it'd be with Mean Street. Anywhere. So, West Main Street, technically in the village. Oh, yeah. But so, yeah, around the bottom of the hill. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Perfect. We have an awesome sports committee. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It really do. You have, you have a couple young kids. We would, we would love to foster you into the program. There you but go. Energy. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's good good young guys. Good, good job, man. Yeah. Good job, man. Yeah. So, the one <laughs> okay. thing. That, yeah. With going to four towns, if I go up to 32 hours, then I would need to consider dropping a position, whether it's for a clerk for St. George or for here or something. Well, so, that is a choice. Yeah. There goes St. George. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we were the OG. Just keep that in mind. That's right. That's true. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And he's going to be arrested. <laughs> Come on. I mean, we just went all the way around. Yeah, we'll be glad to talk to them for you if you want. <laughs> I'm still unsure of that. Because it comes with that. I love you first. <laughs> if I stay up to 24, though, then I feel pretty confident that I can stay board clerk for Hyde Park and St. George and for everybody. Yeah, so, right. for some stability for a while. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, all right. Yeah. You. yeah, that's exciting. Um, the left side was no, that's okay. Mark. I hadn't talked to him yet. So, oh, right, you must see that. Can I? Okay, so just uh, minutes. Um, I was, I was the only person that was here, and we may skip the minutes. When the, 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 I was not there, I was just oh, okay. The, the, 20, the, the 20 seconds, I was just on we, the were, we were both here on the 20 seconds. Okay, right, I was online. Yeah, 20 seconds. Okay, yeah. I was just gonna. That's the one that I Oh, but you. But Matt would have to abstain from the other one. Yeah, so like we can approve the 22nd. Right, right. But we can do the 22nd. Okay, so I will make a motion to approve the minutes from August 22nd. August 22nd. Well, that's nice, but you should also probably read them because there's a few. Yeah, there are a couple that says you need, he needs to fill in the blanks. Right. Oh, yeah, right. Very well, well with a strike version. Yeah, yeah that's so right. I was going to say, and, and then the meeting just says that Matt Moore read the policy, and I stated, I, if I didn't state, I just read the policy. So. <laughs> we agreed to the three percent, but yeah, I don't want someone shooting me later. <laughs> Wait a minute. Um, okay, let me just see it. Um, okay, I think um, it's an, I think it's one I wasn't going to be filled in a blank. Oh, because I'm like I didn't. If you remember seeing. On uh, number six, if you want to kind of go down through on the okay, 22nd. Right. Yeah. So okay, you made a comment already, Susan, but yeah. Dyer Pond, what, what was that? Um, that Susan Bartlett also stated FEMA will help with upgrading the town road to Dyer Pond. Fire Pond. Fire the Fire Pond. Fire pond. That, that's, that, that's, fire pond. yeah, to the Fire, fire Pond. pond. That, that's, um, that's, uh, Your favorite road, yeah, Diggins Road, yeah, Diggins Dig Road. Oh, okay, yeah. Diggins Road. I heard favorite road. I was like, I don't know which one that was. Diggins, yeah, yeah. We have so many, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There is a few been up there. Oh, there is a private pond now. See for that deal. Oh, okay. That probably, which is part of the reason you got to keep it open. 
And then the motion on number 10. That's the scanner. Yes. Wasn't sure if Roland made that motion. Roland did make the motion. Oh, see, I still didn't see that and as I was reading it. So the question mark. Yeah, I saw the question mark. I didn't pick anything up, apparently. And number 16. Oh, second by no marks. So they have she even there. We went on there? someone. Yeah, yeah. So they have yeah. no wait, no members absent must have been there. Okay. I just say blame it on someone who wasn't there. Okay. It's always easy. I probably did that. Okay, I think I'm 26. Oh, no, I wasn't there. Yeah. Wait, so we can't do these ones anyway. Oh, shit, I wasn't at that. Oh, I wasn't at the 22nd. Yeah, yeah. see, I didn't think of it. Hmm. Well, we're getting them, so we'll be all ready next. Yeah. How's that? Okay. So, uh, so, right, so that would have would have been, uh, been not. Yeah, it must have been not. Uh, I, yeah, I was missing the last one, so. Because you had four, yeah, you know, that the meeting minutes, yeah, it must have been me that seconded. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. 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 She states in there, will you please consider the option to explore possibility of drilling well? We've talked about this yeah. literally, I feel like, more times than I've talked to you guys about anything. About joining the well? Drilling a well. Oh, okay. Drilling the well. Because, because of the cost. But I don't know that, again, you were more involved in this lawsuit than anybody is. Yeah. And I think that if we drill a well at our fire department, pretty sure that the cost is just going to get shared to our school and sheriff's department anyways, and we're going to just pay it on that end of things. Right. But the, it's your spreading the cost to the county as opposed to... Oh, okay. That's the, only, the fire department's the only one that is. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. So Sorry. for the same reason they came up with a formula which was who has the most access to the property tax base? It's the school district and the county. For mm -hmm. some reason, they added the fire department, which is limited by part to that list, which okay. they sh should not have done, but decided to do. So can we uh, can we check the legality of this and then move forward? Yeah, we have a preliminary opinion that you can. So you need a more specific question, I guess. There's nothing okay. preventing the, you from drilling a well. Right. The question is, others. the question is, can the village still charge us if we withdraw the fire department? What we would have to remove the surface. Yeah, you just kind of have to do that. Connect, but yeah. could they still charge us? That's just what, and I don't. I don't think they can charge you for a non-service. Right. They, are, they allow people in the village and they shouldn't have done this either from day one to not opt in. So there's there's properties that either don't have waste public sewer or public water because they let them never been connected. See, I, I asked this this is something that has come up five, Triple. six times. And there's other board members who felt that we leave it alone for some reason or another. It was your it was your reason I heard it before. I, I wasn't getting shit that yeah, well, other, yeah, and it was, yeah. And the, right, but it's the understanding the shift. Because right. Brian was explaining as a fire chief, he's like, I'm, my department is subsidizing the village water system. Correct. He said, this is my budget, and I am and I want to look, and he's looking at his budget. That's what he said to me, too. Okay. Yeah, why do I? And I can see that side of it, for yeah, sure. That I agree with. That, like, I, yeah. Yeah. 
why alone? Why you know why right. why his department alone? Right. Whereas the county and the school are the whole almost the whole county. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Um, so, so, so what 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 is that effect going to be when we do pull it? What's what are they they then they're going to have to reevaluate and go over, go through what they went through previous, right? Yeah. Well, so they, they just they'll just cost shift to everybody else. They could they could but spread it over everybody. The twenty thousand a year they could spread it over everybody. They could just move it to the other two. Um, uh, they call it institutional rates. There's three of them right now. They could spread it to the other two institutional rates. They could they can do seventy five percent to the institution and twenty five percent to the whole business. But, but again, I think it's just to make sure that they can't say, well, you're still going to build it. Yeah, so I, I think that's that very specific question. Yeah, get an answer. yeah that's what we need. To I do. think that's a good idea. I think we've it, at $10,000 a month, right? And that's what it was. 20000 a year, right? Yeah, 2000 a month, or 2400 a month. Right. And currently, a year we spend twenty four thousand, so it's two thousand a month. So I would think at two thousand a month we could have a lawyer look at it. Yeah. I'll, get the I'll, question. I'll, either, I'll either have one. Yeah. yeah. Your response to Susan thing. or or yeah. or come yeah. here yeah. to me. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, if you guys have more than one question, right. just to have them available. I think we could. Right. You mean the attorney? Yeah. 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 yeah just to talk to. Them. And then there was a she she brought some the up, health insurance. The health, the health insurance. insurance, right? Would you please consider making a motion to open the ability to have our employees choose an MVP Vermont standard plan while offering up to half of their out of pocket maximum front loaded into an HSA if they choose to, or a QHDPHP? Well, I said. So they had a um, we had a meeting. We had, we had a meeting. Yeah, and uh, and I came. Yeah, and they're definitely um, interested, and it it was helpful because uh, Krista had had used that kind of program through Ben and Jerry's, so she was a real advocate for having a uh, you know an HSA. I have an HSA. Okay. I have, I I have an HSA. I love it. My just just to throw it out there, my son okay. my son's thumb ER visit was thirty five hundred. My insurance picked up sixteen hundred of it, and our H my H HSA paid the other paid the other part. Right. So the and and when you when you look at the numbers, if if folks choose to go that route, it's it saves the town money, okay? Because of you know the the whole cost drops. And so the suggestion is to to support people because of course when you when you first make that step into it, yeah, your first year you got <laughs> you you don't have any cushion, and that for the it, first couple of years that you, with each individual, is just whatever the type of savings that you split that savings and the town puts half of that savings into their HSA yeah. so that they start with a, you know, with a cushion. And apparently, I guess a lot of companies do that yeah. for several years anyway, if not right along. Which, yeah, mine does it right along. Yeah, yours. which makes it, per makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. If they, Contribute. You have to contribute to your HSA, and then oh, yeah. match. Right. Is that what she's? That's what she means, right? I don't even contribute to my my, uh, my company. Some companies do do that. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a good benefit. Um, so it, it's no cost to the town, essentially. And it's giving them another yeah. option. Yeah, like it's them another option. I mean, there's several of them. This plan. Exactly. That's what I am. I yeah. Have, they, they said no, no, no. You don't have to do it. Again, as as uh, well, we were talking with Jason. <laughs> he was like, he says, you know, with the with the four kids, he says they spend more time in the emergency. He's like, his kids more than not, yeah, would not make any sense for him. It's like bad plan for you. <laughs> I used to race her race, and the saying isn't a matter of if you're going to get hurt. It's, it's when, when, <laughs> yeah. when you have three kids racing or yeah. kids, it's it's kids racing. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's just we, you, everybody, like I don't know. We could dedicate one. He says, I don't think this will work for me. Well, I'll, they, 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 I'll put the motion on the table for yeah. him. I think it's a good thing. I, the, as long as it's not a cost to the taxpayers that we're not seeing mean, that this is at a, this is at added benefit added benefit yep. sure I'll second that yeah and yeah. And, and and who the a financial manager will maintain this yeah yeah so yeah yeah it's part of there you want to with your savings do you want to do 
50% the first year, 60% do more the first, what do you want to do? I think, can we just do the one year and see what it looks like? Um, for, like uh -huh. do, 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 do 50% this year and then look at it to make a decision yeah. for next year based on maybe what it looks like. Yeah. Saving play. Yeah. Okay, so do it with the with the town contributing 50% of what's saved for each person on there. Yeah. And then the account. Okay. Yep. So I'll uh, did you get that job done? Yep. He's typing over here just a second. It's pretty much what Jen has written yep. here. Exactly. We're agreeing with Jen and yep. for that fifty percent part. So when, when it will be based on the employee. That amount will be fifty percent of what they put in, right? Well, well, it's right. Fifty percent of what's saved. Fifty percent of the single plan currently. Currently, right? She, wait, she had a great sheet that had it. Oh, I don't see it. Oh, it's right here. Okay, right. This one. Yeah, there was one you can't read. Okay. <laughs> the, the one you're looking at here. Yeah, there we go. Right. Yeah, well, and, and here's the, the last sheet that you can actually see. Yeah, it's the half of out-of-pocket max. Right. So that's what we would call it. The employer contribution, half of out-of-pocket max. And that's what she wrote. It, it, so it would mean that this would be hard to budget for depending on the fluctuation. Correct. Of employment and everyone's choice of health care plan. Right. See, because right now, well, it, it depends it, on who it chooses it. it. Well, it, it's who chose it, chooses it, the difference. And we have, um, right now, we have benefited from having a number of people who do the opt out. Okay. And we know with a new town administrator coming in, their insurance is from somebody else. Terrific. If not, if they opt in, that's a big cost. Mark, who has been opt out for years, is now opting in this year. Because his wife's insurance is is done and doesn't cover it anymore, so there's a uh, big, yep. a big jump in our cost. Yep. So which in I think I think was helpful in talking with all of them about. It. They said, well, you know, these are from the savings. You should give us seventy five percent. I said, well, I'm trying to explain the difference. And Mark said, see, I'm going to come in, and that's going to be a new big cost to the town. And so that it doesn't have you know. He said, Susan's job is to look at the whole thing. You guys are looking at your individual paycheck. I said, right, you know, so. So let's see. So you got you got it now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was just waiting. For okay. So we got a uh, uh, motion to uh, to open the ability. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. I know what that out of pocket seven thousand dollars feels like. Yeah. But as and I, I I told them I said, but in doing it, and, and there is a risk because. My my niece's employer didn't do much coverage, and she's you know twenty five and healthy, and she got a real serious kidney infection. And presto, there she was paying her you know doing the high deductible. There she was paying the three thousand dollar high deductible, right. you know, and she didn't have that much she didn't have well, that much money saved yet. Yeah, I, I, my age is at maxed out like forty five hundred. And Patrick's Patrick's surgery, well, I I'm, I'm maxing out of pocket per person which is seven thousand okay. i got it to plan as ours yeah so uh, out of pocket i'm still looking at a twenty five hundred dollar fee even though i'm paying insurance or anything else it's just yeah the chase you say is huge so my insurance renewal was september one dan was in a ambulance head of the uvm on september one and had emergency surgery and was in icu at uvm for three days i'm like Great. So we had our deductible the first day. <laughs> my charts in September. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I haven't got the bill yet. I haven't even logged in. Oh, yeah, I know. Yes, man. Yeah. I'm getting the most daily right now, Patrick. So it's like I get one. Oh. Yeah. Get those emails. I didn't get them. Okay, we didn't miss. All right. Town warrants. Got the warrants? Oh, yes. I'll prove the warrants. I already signed them. Okay. okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay.
Centerville Road update. We got a change order apparently. Yeah. Three. 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 Self explanatory in this paper, but generally they, they found ledge that they didn't expect. Right. Uh, need authorization for we've been assigned uh, for change order. Oh, only fifteen hundred dollars. That's not a bad change order. <laughs> I was worried. <laughs> it's, 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 oh, you know, fringe of the size of that project and everything else has been so big. I I know it all. Okay. okay. Fringe is going to find another zero there. So the normal okay. process for the change order, just to really recap, construction worker, oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> calls the onsite engineer which in our case is watershed consulting who works with trapped in engineering they go out meet with the contractor to analyze things maybe sketch out the problem come up with a solution generally at that point they're supposed to go to the owner which is the town and say we have a problem mm -hmm. Houston we have, we have to we, we can't get this resolved we have to stop work right exactly uh, and then the town says, all right, yeah, we, do you have all the approvals from the engineer and the contractor and the price that everybody's agreed on? We'll bring it to the next like, we're meeting in two weeks. That would be a normal process. We just you know, hopefully make a decision at that meeting. Engineer goes back. Town's of owner is okay. Carry on. In this case, we didn't administratively want to wait for two tonight to come to the board and say, we put those guys on ice for a week. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and we didn't want to call a special meeting on 1500 bucks either. It's sort of like a yeah, decision yeah. just to have the opportunity to do it forward. Take care of it. Good. And that was that. So I don't know how Matt handles these things, but I'm sure they come up. This is true. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But a change order is a good opportunity for contractors to make some money. Usually, yeah, it seemed pretty reasonable. It wasn't that big of an area, but it was uh, drums being very fair. A lot of times, like your downtime, suddenly like your crew costs. So, like the time it happens, change the design. So it's all delayed. It's still so well. Yeah. So anyway, well, he's been, they've been. But it, I wanted to bring it for those of you just to give everybody an update how the normal process was, what sure. happened here. Yeah, and then. Once you guys approve this, it just gets added to the contract price. And okay. Work went right through it, so there's no delay. Which is mostly because we're trying to get them over. The I know. Too, so. Yeah. Well, they got they moved almost everything. Yeah. So and okay. the weather's beautiful. There's multiple reasons. I'll make a motion to approve the change order. I'll second it. Or do we make yeah. a motion to have Susan sign it? Or yeah, I'll make, yeah, yeah, right. okay. make a motion for Susan to approve the change order. So I second that. All in favor signify by saying aye. Of fifteen hundred and ninety dollars. That's right. Yeah. Definitely. There we go. You didn't even put overhead and profit on it. Yeah. Who's there? Who's this? Always put fifteen percent on top of that. So. <laughs> I think he's actually by contract allowed to. But... Yeah, usually. Okay. okay. Did we do all in favor signify by saying aye? Uh, right. Anybody no. opposed? Anybody abstaining? <laughs> okay. No. Just so we'll get me. I said, Liz, <laughs> keep my toes here. Okay. Now, does that take care of everything? There was a potential for executive session if needed. But can, let's, can, can we, if we, you got five minutes, which would, would be helpful. I got yeah. as much time as you need me to have. Okay. <laughs> I'll make a motion to okay. go into executive session inviting Ron and Justin yeah. and board members. Okay. okay. There's a second down there. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstaining? Okay. okay.